Excellency Siti Rosai Marie Yanti Datto Haji Abdul Rahman, Secretary General of IPA, Honorable Tumali Wong Pachan, Chairperson of Justice Affairs Committee, Chairperson of WIPA, Honorable Dr. Sutun Sajacha, Vice President of the National Assembly of La PDR, Samdak Moha Rosapitka Tepede Kunsudri, President of the National Assembly of King Cambodia, Honorable Jessica Tan, Deputy Speaker of Parliament of the Republic of Singapore, Excellency Ambassador Sarah Al Bakri Dasan, Permanent Representative of Malaysia to ASEAN, Excellency Dr. Maisa Binti Chi Yusuf, Chair of the ASEAN Committee on Women, Honorable Tamit Dorfuth, Senator, United States Senate, Representatives from the ASEAN and the Parl Parliamentary Assembly, good afternoon. It is my great privilege to deliver the keynote address in this important session on collaborative partnerships for advancing women's political participation and inclusive governance. I congratulate the women parliamentarians of the ASEAN and the Parliamentary Assembly for organizing this event. This is a timely and much needed platform to address the barriers to women's political participation and the challenges to achieving inclusive governance. As we engage in today's discussions, I would like to share some views that may help inform and hopefully inspire the VIPA in the, in the implementation of its women's political participation and leadership plan of action and implementation framework 2024-2030. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the history of women political leaders in Asia is a remarkable journey marked by resilience, progress, and transformative change. Beginning in the early 20th century, women across the region began to assert their rights and demand equal representation in political processes. The rise of influential figures like Sri Mavo Banda Renke in Sri Lanka, who became the world's first female prime minister in 1960, set a powerful president. Other trailblazers, including many from the ASEAN region, have emerged and continue to rise, proving that women can lead with strength and insight in complex political landscapes. This evolution is underpinned by the recognition that women's rights to participate in political and public life are essential for achieving gender equality and fostering inclusive societies. These rights have been protected by international standards for decades, not notably through the 1979 Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. CEDAW, which advocates for equal rights for women to vote, stand for election, and hold public office. This framework not only reinforces the progress made, but also highlights the ongoing need for advocacy and support to ensure that women's political participation continues to grow. However, despite these advancements, globally, women hold approximately only 27% of parliamentary seats, yet in many Asian nations, this figure remains significantly lower. According to UN Women, as of May this year, only 28 countries are headed by women. This disparity underscores the urgent need for continued advocacy and collaborative efforts to empower women politically and ensure their voices are heard in decision-making processes. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in our own ASEAN region, women leaders have also made significant strides. 
we have had and continue to have women at the highest political office. For example, in Indonesia, Myanmar, the Philippines, and in Thailand. Each of these leaders has inspired future generations to engage in politics, advocate for gender equality, and break the glass ceiling. The emergence of young leaders across the region highlights the ongoing evolution of women's political participation in the region. However, the journey is far from complete. Many countries in ASEAN still grapple with significant barriers to women's political participation, underscoring the need for ongoing advocacy and support to ensure that the legacy of these pioneers continues to flourish. The 2024 ASEAN Gender Outlook indicates that as of 2023, women occupy 23% of national parliamentary seats in the region. While this is an improvement since 2015, it still lags behind the global average. It has also been observed that there is an overall increase in women's participation in local governments. Women in leadership roles, including those in parliament, are uniquely positioned to represent the diverse perspectives of their communities and advocate for the changes needed to foster an inclusive political environment. Their voices are crucial in breaking down these barriers and paving the way for future generations of women leaders. Despite the region having a nearly equal number of women and men, and despite women and girls enjoy, enjoying equal access to educational opportunities, significant barriers to political participation persist. These challenges are largely driven by entrenched patriarchal norms and limited access to leadership roles rather than differences in educational attainment or qualifications. ASEAN has long been committed to elevating women's voices by ensuring their meaningful and substantive participation in decision and policy-making processes. Since the adoption of the Declarations on the Advancement of Women in ASEAN in 1988, we have sought to ensure women's meaningful participation across all sectors. The ASEAN Declaration on Gender Responsive Implementation of the ASEAN Community Vision 2025 and Sustainable Development Goals, adopted in 2017, further underscores our commitment to gender equality and women, women's empowerment, particularly in leadership. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, current ASEAN frameworks and ASEAN-led mechanisms offer strategic pathways for IPA to synergize efforts in enhancing women's political participation and leadership. For instance, the ASEAN Gender Mainstreaming Strategic Framework embodies ASEAN commitment to enhancing women's political participation and leadership. A key outcome of this framework is to strengthen the engagement of women's organizations in consultation, planning, and implementation processes. This ensures that the perspectives and needs of all women and girls are effectively integrated into ASEAN commun community building initiatives. To realize the goals of the framework, the ASEAN Gender Mainstreaming Steering Committee has been established as an ASEAN-led mechanism to facilitate partnership among relevant ASEAN sectoral bodies and ASEAN entities across the three ASEAN community pillars. ASEAN's role or ASEAN ongoing work on advancing women, peace and security in the region is another prime example of how partnerships promote and strengthen women's political participation in a traditionally male-dominated policy space. The Joint Statement on Promoting Women, Peace and Security in ASEAN, adopted in 2017, along with the ASEAN Regional Plan of Action on Women, Peace and Security in 2022, 
highlights the need for women's equal, full, and effective participation in peace processes. Women must be recognized as negotiators, mediators, and critical contributors to security discussions. Furthermore, these frameworks advocate for a balanced representation of women and men, as well as the integration of gender perspectives across defense and security sectors, among others. Recent initiatives, such as the ASEAN Women, Peace and Security Summit, high-level dialogue to advance the implementation of the Regional Plan of Action on Women, Peace and Security, held in July 2023 in Indonesia, have created crucial spaces for collaboration among stakeholders, allowing us to mobilize support for these frameworks. The Advisory Group on Women, Peace and Security has been established as an ASEAN-led mechanism to foster partnerships among various ASEAN bodies focused on gender equality, the empowerment of all women and girls, defense and security, transnational crime, and the promotion of women's entrepreneurship. Additionally, the ASEAN Committee on Women is actively working to promote gender responsive governance and leadership. Their current efforts aim to enhance women's participation and representation in decision making at all levels, fostering a more inclusive political environment. Under the leadership of Cambodia, the ACW is finalizing its report on women's political participation and leadership in ASEAN. This report builds on the baseline study conducted in 2015 and evaluates the progress made as well as the challenges faced in strengthening women's participation in decision-making spaces across society. As we move forward, I encourage WIPA to engage with these ASEAN-led mechanisms to champion positive social norms, addressing the disproportionate burden of unpaid care work on women is essential as it directly impacts our ability to participate fully in political life. Furthermore, WIPA is well positioned to support emerging women leaders through mentorship and capacity building initiatives. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we look ahead, let us recognize that our journey is about shattering the glass ceiling to open doors to a future where women's political participation and leadership redefine inclusive governance. By committing to empowerment and mentorship, supporting women's organizations, and advancing gender responsive policy, we can foster an environment where every woman has the opportunity to thrive and lead making women's collective voices essential to decision making. I urge each of you to embrace your role as agents of change and to cultivate solidarity among women across borders. By sharing your experiences and strategies, we can build a powerful network that uplifts one another. Let us take bold steps toward a future where women lead with confidence, competence, and compassion. In the words of the first women to become the president of Chile and former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, and I quote, for me, a better democracy is a democracy where women will not only have the right to vote and to elect but to be elected, end of quote. Thank you for your unwavering dedication to this essential cause.